Um, Michael, first off, just uh, on the news, obviously yesterday we got with, with Project Big Picture, funding coming in for uh, League One and, and League Two clubs. You must be relieved that something has been sorted. Yeah, I mean, obviously, I'm not sure what has been sorted in terms of like the actual detail, but obviously, like you, you see it reported on Sky and all the, the media coverage, so um, I'm sure everyone at the football club, if that is the case, uh, yeah, it's, it's a good thing that, um, to know that, obviously, uh, you know, the League One and League Two clubs, uh, like ourselves, are, are hopefully going to be okay. Um, we've got a lot of talk uh, about the transfer window, of course, as, as well, that is uh, coming up. Uh, how busy are you expecting to be? Um, not, not massively busy. Um, I'm hopeful that um, we might get one deal done um, before tomorrow, uh, but that probably will only be the case um, if two or three sort of leave the building, uh, which we're quite hopeful of, of at the minute. Um, Robbie got a lot of uh, rumours linking him with your football club. Is that the one you're trying to get done? Well, he's definitely uh, one that obviously I mentioned three or four days or so ago that is a, is a keen interest of not just obviously Lincoln. Uh, you're probably aware there's probably umpteen clubs who would love the opportunity to, to bring Robbie to the club. So, But yeah, listen, uh, I've already said it. He's one that definitely... Um, if we can get it done and uh, it's available and you know all parties can agree on it, uh, then yes, yeah, certainly it'd be someone that we'd be looked to bring to the club. The couple you say you need to go out, are they just loan deals? Yeah, uh, potentially. Um, although uh, you never know, things happen pretty quickly, as we know. But uh, yeah, I think the, the, the lads that we've already spoke about, lads who need games, who need game time under the belt, um, I think, you know, it's an opportunity for them to get football uh, between now and January. Um, I mean, there is, you know, you are quite a young side, you're quite a new side as well, but is there any pressure that if a, a deal, you know, could be done for a, a Sean Rowe and a, a Lewis Monts where people might have watched them early doors this season, is there any pressure on you to, to sell those players? No, 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 no pressure at all. Um, and, you know, it's one of them where um, I think, like, as a football club, um, sort of going forward and already you know if we get into a position or we think that you know, there's a chance that one of our better young players might be leaving then we go we always try and make sure that we're in a place where we're, we're comfortable and we know that we can replace him immediately so I think it's a little bit early doors for that I think we're right so many times Rob we're right at the start of a, a journey that hopefully over the next few years We'll have success on the pitch, not only for individuals, but as a team. And the reality is, you know, when you get success, players are going to have their own individual success and we've just got to make sure we keep churning out and, and replacing people. Um, there's been rumours as well, I've seen Jordan Adebayo Smith been linked with, with Sunderland. Is he there at the moment? Uh, I've got no idea. Um, yeah, um, Jordan's, been on a, Jordan's been on a lot of trials over the last probably four, five, maybe six weeks. Um, and, you know, we've, we've, been, we've granted that, that, granted him his opportunity to sort of go out and trial and, and uh, you know, find somewhere where, you know, he sees, us, I suppose, his hole and thinks he's going to get regular football. Um, hopefully between now and end of play tomorrow, uh, he'll be one of the ones that we can, you know, help and, and try and, I suppose, uh, facilitate him more game time. Um, on Tom Hopper, is he OK after his injury last week? Yeah, he's not trained this week. I'm not sure if he's going to train again today, but I, I am hopeful that he'll be fine for Saturday. Uh, he's just still a little bit sore at this moment in time. Everyone else OK? Uh, yeah, obviously, um, we're going to be missing Jacko with the suspension. Um, all the other injuries in terms of Max Melbourne, Aaron Lewis, uh, etc., they're all still injured at this moment in time. Um, Zach Obazidi obviously played uh, for the Island under 21. When do you get him back in the building? When are you able to, to have him? Are you, is he available for the weekend? Yeah, he'll be with, available for the weekend. He'll be with us tomorrow. Obviously, uh, I'm guessing he got tested yesterday. That's part of the protocol. Obviously, likely to go out on international duty. They, they get tested on their return. And, 
obviously he won't be allowed back into his training ground until uh, you know we get a negative test. Um, Harvey Saunders has been flying for, for Fleetwood this season. Just how do you stop a striker that's in such great form? Yeah, I mean, I think he's got incredible pace, hasn't he? I think we've all seen that. Um, I think you've got to, one, try and stop the supply chain to him, which is, is uh, not as always easy as said because, because they've got some very, very good experienced midfield players at Fleetwood. Um, but then if you can't stop the supply chain, you've got to try and deal with it as early as you possibly can. And again, that's easier said than done, but there's certain ways that um, you can try and avoid allowing players to be in positions that certainly they've been in so far this year. When you see them play like last week against Hull and they put in such a great performance, does that make it easier to scout them because you're seeing them maybe at their best rather than at their worst? Yeah, possibly. I mean, it's one of them where, you know, I think the way the game went last week and the result that they got is probably what most people expected of Fleetwood this year. Let's face it, I think obviously they had a fantastic season last year, missed out on the playoffs. Uh, the good side, they've got a good mix of, of experience and youth. Um, you know, it's a game that, again, it's a great one for us to judge. Uh, we've, we've come up against a few sides already this year that are expected to do really, really well in the division. And we've acquitted ourselves really, really well. And, you know, I'll be sort of judging our performance and the way we handle Fleetwood on Saturday that will give me a better indication of, you know, where we may end up at the end of the season. And, and on this run at the moment, obviously we're going to get a, a few weeks where it's, it's very busy with games in, in Tuesday nights as well, the second busy run after the, the League Cup run. Do you think your players are better equipped now to deal with the fact it's going to be Saturday, Tuesday, Saturday for the next couple of weeks? Well, yeah, yeah, they will because obviously, you know, it's like anything after the layoff that we've had over, over the COVID stuff, um, you know, getting them games into the belt is going to be a good thing. If we deal with the the next five to ten games, as well as we did the first five to ten games, I'll snap your hands off. <laughs> Lovely. Thank you, mate. Cheers. Go, oh, Harvey. Morning, Michael. Harvey, you all right? Uh, so we've seen Harry Anderson at right back for 90 minutes against Mansfield and then for a further 30 minutes against Bristol Rose. Is, is that going to be something you use on a more permanent basis or is he just filling the gap? Uh, well, it's not something that I expect to use from a permanent basis, but what it does, it just gives us a, a, an extra option. Um, you know, obviously, Harry's certainly more attack minded, attack minded, I suppose, than, than TJ. And TJ, as you can imagine, um, is, a, is a better defender than, than Harry. But there are going to be occasions like on Saturday where, you know, we're chasing the game and we're behind in the game and we need something to happen. And, I think you've got to take risks. I think it's important to take risks like that. There's no point just you know, losing the game to one and not trying to have a go and do something um, that you think can... You know, I'd rather lose 3-1 having a go and trying to get some out of the game and win, win the game rather than uh, you know, losing 2-1 and not really having a, having a go at it. Now, Fleet would have failed to keep a clean sheet in any of their five league games. Will that encourage you to be more attacking to try and exploit that? Yeah, I mean, to be fair, I think we'll score goals ourselves. In, I'll be surprised if we have many, many games this year that we don't score a goal. Um, obviously, you know, it is important to keep clean sheets and we're aware of that. And, you know, I think on Saturday, apart from obviously the two goals we conceded and all that, it's a bit of a, it can sound a bit of a silly statement, but the two goals we conceded were definitely um, stoppable, let's say that. Um, we look pretty sound and we look pretty solid and you know, I thought we dominated the game for the majority of the, of the game. So yes, you know, we're looking to go there and score goals, but ultimately, you know, we've got to go and have the mindset of trying to keep a clean sheet as well. Games involving either Lincoln or Fleet, uh, 66 percent of the goals have been in the second half this season. Do you expect the games that open up in the second half similar to last week? I think most games do open up. I think if you watch most games of football at any level. I think the first 30 minutes is a little bit of a game of chess. Both teams sort of feeling each other out and seeing what they're about and the formations and the styles. And then that last, so the, the next 30 minutes, you know, tends to be one team has gone ahead. So you'd either, you know, having to press a little bit more than the, the, the other team. 
and then last half an hour, I think, doesn't matter whether you're playing League Two or the Premier League, you know, you're either going for it or you're holding on to something and you become an account attacking team. So I think what we will get on Saturday is it a bigger footballing game. I think two sides who want to play, uh, two sides who are predominantly more attacking, tap minded uh, rather than defending. Um, so it looks like it's going to be a classic nil nil. 